Hi everyone, we're going to paint a strawberry canvas today. You're going to start with an 8 inch gallery wrap canvas and two values of gray paint and we're going to paint the top half of the canvas with an undercoat of the dark gray value and the bottom half will paint with a medium gray and blend the two together. The purpose of this is to undercoat the canvas with a, a value that's going to cover up all this white and this will make it easier for us to paint in our our colors as we start adding color to the canvas. So just use a half inch or three quarter inch flat brush and just work the paint so that you cover all the little texture and blend the colors together. It doesn't have to be real smooth just the whole purpose is just to get a darker value over all the white canvas. I'm going to add a second coat over this and this time I'm going to drop down to a, a light gray value at the bottom here just to lighten this up a little bit more. And just softly work that back up into our medium and dark gray values. We're going to do a lot of our blending now with a what I call my blending mix, which is a mix of Traditions Glazing Medium and Traditions Extender and Blending Medium. And I always use this more or less in place of water. So we're going to start adding some color to our canvas. And I'm starting out with a burnt umber. And first I've loaded my brush with the blending mix and then picked up the burnt umber and I'm just brushing that out starting in the top right corner. The blending mix will extend the drying time of your paint and help you blend that out more smoothly. So just start working around the corners of the canvas with some of this dark brown. And we're working around our line drawing, filling in the background with some different values. I've just added some raw umber to my palette. That's a little darker brown. The burnt umber's got a little bit more of a red color to it. And the raw umber's a cooler, bittersweet chocolate color. So we're going to use these two colors just to make a mottled background with some different values of brown. And I want the canvas to be darker near the top and then we're going to lighten it a little bit as we come down to the bottom. a little blending medium to your brush as it it gets a little tacky or dries out and then just pick up more paint and we're going to work around our trace the de trace design so I'm trying to keep my edges clean around this little basket
If you prefer, you could paint the background in before you trace the, the, the design in, but I always like to work the background around my trace design because it gives me an idea where I want to change the values. I'm adding some medium beige to the palette and we're going to start working in some lighter values here at the bottom of the canvas. I'm going to start out with some burnt umber and some raw sienna mixed together. This is kind of the this golden brown color that's raw sienna and softened into the burnt umber. So add a golden glow here to the bottom of the canvas. We want to repeat some of this here on the right side of the canvas so we don't have it in just one spot. So we're going to just keep working this down around the berries and I'm always using a dirty brush so you're going to get little hints of the darker browns that were in the brush. When you start scrubbing this out they're going to just softly blend into the color. Now I'm picking up a little bit of the medium beige 
that's a lighter tan color, but not quite as yellow as the, the raw sienna. And just softly blend that back in, in this lower left side of the canvas around the small berry. And we'll refine this as we go along. So this is our just, just our first rough shot at some variations in values. This whole canvas is about adding layers and layers of glazed color to, to build up your colors and values. As I come here under the berries, I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt umber under here to create a little shadow. And blend some of the medium beige back into that to soften it. I'm working these colors in around the little leaves at the top of the berries. I'm not worried about being real careful about outlining these. Just leave a little suggestion where the leaves are going that we can work over later. Okay, we've got a layer of value in the browns over the front of the canvas and I'm just Going back and just softening them a little bit. The blending medium on our brush keeps these paints workable for a little while. And looking at it, I think I want to add a little bit of light value here above the two large berries. This will bring our uh, light value kind of up at a diagonal across the canvas. Okay, now we're going to paint in our little basket with some of the raw sienna. And you can add just a touch of white to that to make it a little more opaque and a little lighter in value. 
when I do these brush mix mixes, I don't try to get a real even mix. I just kind of softly blend the two together. It gives you a little variation in values as you're laying it down. And we just kind of want to get the, the base color in this basket to start with. And we'll refine it later as we add some shading and highlights. Now as we come to this right side of the basket, this is going to be an area that's a little more shadowed, so we want to use more of the raw sienna and less white, just to give this a little darker value to start. Okay, we want to fill in these little corner openings of the basket with a dark brown, so I'm just cutting that in with my angle brush using the burnt umber and some raw umber mixed together. To darken the right side of the the basket a little bit more. I'm going to add a second coat that's a mix of raw sienna with some burnt umber. I just want to darken this down a little bit more. Then with some more brow sienna, I'm going to base the front bottom of the basket. and add some of the burnt umber into that raw sienna just to darken it a little bit more. So I'm just kind of adjusting these values as I go along.
I'm going to use the same color mix on the top of the basket. And I'm just coming up to the rim. We're going to leave that little flat rim band or band that goes around the basket unpainted for the moment. We've got the left side of the basket left to do, and I'm going to mix some burnt umber, some raw sienna, and a little bit of that medium beige. And base this side of the basket in. Some of these areas you're seeing, like on these corners, you're seeing into the basket because there's little slits on the side. So I'm just adding a little bit lighter value here with some of the raw sienna and a little bit of the white. So we're sort of seeing this, the back inside of the basket through that little slit. I'm going to tone that down just a little bit. And adjust this value a little bit and lighten it here at the top. And just a little shadow here to make that edge stand out from the inside. Lighten up this corner a little bit more so it separates it from that inside edge. Painting a square object like this, the, the basket, you know, a lot of the dimension is based on these value changes. And this is an old stained basket, so we can just scrub in some different colors. I'm going to just darken this back side of the basket a little bit with some of the, the raw sienna.
going to darken this left side of the basket under that rim so that we have a little shadow. That side of the basket is sort of away from the light, so we want that to be the probably the darkest edge of the basket. Picking up some burnt umber and I'm going to paint the inside of the band around the basket here on the right side. This is a little flat band and we're painting what would be the dark inside shaded edge, the flat edge. The little light band that I've left gray is going to be the little um, front edge of the basket that you would see when you're looking straight on at it. Add some shading here to the left of the strawberry. Have a little cast shadow. Painting the top edge of the basket with some white and raw sienna. And add some light value here inside the, the bottom band. Our light source is coming from the top sort of right side. So these top edges and open edges of the basket are going to be the lightest. And that's why we're adding light here and why we added light on the top of the band. So now it's going to be a matter of just refining these values. I'm going to add a, a little light edge here on the left front of the band. Again, we're trying to pick places where I think the light is going to be hitting that will be a little bit lighter.
And on this edge, I'm going to go a little lighter and brighter with the white and raw sienna because that's closest to our light source. And run that along the top band. Just blend that out. A little fine line of that lightest value where the light's catching the front edge. We're going to let the basket set up and dry for a while and we're going to base these strawberries in with white. We're going to base the strawberries with a second coat of Indian yellow, just to give a little more coverage. And then to give a little bit more of a yellow straw color to our basket, we're going to do just a light glaze of Indian yellow over the basket. We're going to start glazing some red on these strawberries. So I'm using some of the blending medium and side loading an angle brush with naphtha red. And I'm going to start floating this red around the outer edge of this black, this back strawberry. We're just going to work it all the way around. This will be just our first layer, so don't worry about it being really a bright red. We're going to build this up in multiple, multiple layers. Just pick up a little more paint as you need to and some more blending medium. And continue working this around. Our yellow undercoat will help provide a, a glow of a highlight through this red. Next I've added a little bit of phthalo green yellow to the palette. I'm going to brush a little bit of this onto 
some of the strawberries to add that little hint of green that sometimes shows through when a strawberry is not quite right, ripe. So I'm going to put a little bit of this on this little small strawberry here at the bottom. Just floating that around the left bottom edge. And we can add this to the, the tips of some of the other strawberries. Usually the strawberries will stay a little greener at the bottom tip than it, towards the top as they're ripening. And then on this back berry, I'm going to add a little bit of that green to the, it's the top of the berry, but since this berry is upside down, it's at the bottom. And kind of work that up as a little bit of a, a shadow between the two berries. Okay, while we're letting this glaze on the berries dry, we're going to go back and work on the basket a little bit. I put some blending medium on my brush. I'm going to pick up a little white, a little bit of raw sienna. I'm just working these basket colors. I'm going to pick up a little bit of red in this so we can repeat the berry colors. And then I'm going to Kind of dry brush some streaks across the inside bottom of this basket. These are just very sketchy. And then pull some on the bottom of the basket. Kind of where the light is shining into the basket and highlighting it. Just streaking a little bit of this white with a touch touch of the red in it here on the top edge and a highlight here on the bottom edge of the band. And this just little touch of red isn't very obvious but it helps repeat our berry colors into the reflections on the basket. I'm going to streak a little bit of this on top of the basket. Just building up light reflections. Okay, you'll find I jump around as I'm painting, so now we're going to go back and put another layer on the berries now that our greens dried and so I'm floating some red to start building up the red color of the berries. And how much red you put on it will kind of determine how ripe your berries look. 
I haven't quite decided that yet, so we'll we'll see where this comes out at the end. But this is our our first layer of red on some of these berries. Things always evolve as I'm painting. And as always, to keep this paint nice and transparent and give it a little workability, I've used the blending medium on my brush before I float the color. As you add these glazes, you can use a little mop brush to soften the strokes or to make it a little bit more even. And so you can see these are very transparent layers to start with. Our yellows show through. So now let's um, add a layer to this berry here in front. Again, I've got some blending medium on my brush. I've picked up some of the naphthol red. And you can side load it on the brush if you want. And I'm just brushing this out in a light, transparent coat over the berries, I'm trying to keep it a little darker at the edges and lighter at the center. So once you get that on there, just tap it with a a mop brush to soften it. And then it's very important to let these layers dry completely before you try to go over it with a second layer. As long as it's still kind of workable you can go over a second layer like this one here, but once it starts tacking up if you try to paint over it, you're going to, to pull holes in your paint. And I find the easiest way is to use a hair dryer to speed up the drying time. This back berry's had a little time to dry, so we can go back in and add a second layer of glaze over top of it, and we're this will just start building up our reds a little bit, make them more powerful looking. So as your berries dry, the first layer, you can go back and add a second layer to each of them before we move on to the next video.